Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly What's Up. I'm Jacob Clore. And I'm Rachel Anderson, and this is your Weird National News. Many of you may have seen or heard about the television show Scandal starring Kerry Car Washington as Olivia Pope. According to the Huffington Post, an Iowa woman might be a little obsessed with the popular series. The 20-year-old woman directly called police claiming to be Olivia Pope and told them that a car bomb was making its way to the White House via Cyrus Bean, another character on the show. The woman continued to talk about scandal-related stories when the responding officer arrived. The officer reported that the woman smelled of alcohol and had impaired speech and balance. She also confessed, confessed to possessing a fake ID. The woman was arrested with a blood alcohol level twice the legal limit. She was charged with public intoxication and for misusing the 911 system. You know, I've never really thought about, you know, you know, getting drunk and thinking about my favorite TV show. That's just, <laughs> I mean, just, you know, the, the, the thought process it must take to, like, get into that character's mindset, and, like, while you're drunk. It just kind of makes me chuckle a little bit. Right, it's a bit of a strange story, this yeah. one. Well, this next story proves that you should never underestimate the artistic abilities of a child. According to the Huffington Post, an 11-year-old in Connecticut helped police catch a burglary suspect in her neighborhood by drawing a very basic picture of the suspect. When the police visitor visited her house, Rebecca DiPietro offered to draw the suspect. Since she drew a simple drawing, she felt that the police officer would just crumple it up and throw it away and not use it. However, the police kept the sketch and used it to catch a man who confessed to the crimes in the area. This just proves that every little piece of evidence can help solve the biggest of crimes. Wow, that's impressive. Must yeah. have been like a decent drawing or no? I mean, it's funny because when you look at the drawing, it's like, it's not bad, but it, it could use like a little work. It's definitely not mm -hmm. done by a professional, but I mean, great it's job on her part to help. Right, it's impressive they can find it just based on that drawing. Yeah. Well, Jacob, do you remember the story about the Waco Elk Twitter account from last week? Who could forget it? <laughs> well, this week, I have yet another story about a Twitter account run by, run by an animal. This time, according to NBC News, the account has been created as a marketing ploy for an Australian chicken restaurant called Chicken Treat. The owners bought a chicken named Betty and put a keyboard in her coop. Betty walks and pecks at the keyboard, and the owners tweet her gibberish every couple of hours with the hashtag chicken tweet. The company will continue this process until Betty types a five-letter English word, which will place her in the Guinness Book of World Records. She has gotten close with the word bum, but most of her tweets are random letters and apostrophes. I need to follow this tweet, this, this chicken. I mean, it's just, I can't, I can't imagine just, like, waiting every day for, like, you know, apostrophe, exclamation point. That just sounds kind of funny. Yeah, I, I actually looked it up, and they, like, it's obviously run by a person. Like, they write things every now and then that says, like, oh, Betty will be here, and Betty's taking the day off. Yeah. But then it's, like, actually hilarious when you get to the tweets by Betty. Yeah. What a smart chicken. <laughs> well, do you remember your behind-the-wheel test, Rachel? Yes, I actually ran over a squirrel. Oh, my gosh. On the very first day of driver's ed. Wow, I was just about to ask if anything bad happened, but I think no. running over a squirrel is a little traumatizing. It was bad. The girl in the car with me cried. <laughs> of course. Well, according to the Huffington Post, a driving student from Washington State drove her car into her driving school. The student mistook the gas pedal for the brake, which sent the car into the building. She was approaching the end of the test and unfortunately failed due to her diffraction. Luckily, nobody was injured. It's a little bit worse than the squirrel incident. Just, a, just a little bit. I remember when I was... Um, I still had my permit, and I was driving around, and I accidentally ran it over a turtle. Oh, no! So, and I saw it, but I didn't have enough time to do anything. But it's, it's a little traumatizing when you run, it over, run over an animal, especially, like, a turtle. I think I'm hardened since the first time I ever drove, I ran over a squirrel. Okay. Yeah. I have to admit that burritos are more than often my meal of choice when it comes to fast food. A Chipotle burrito with an average amount of filling is 1.72 pounds, but according to NBC News, a Mexican restaurant in Brooklyn is offering 10% of their restaurant to the person who can eat their 30-pound burrito, along with a ghost pepper margarita. The giant burrito costs $150, and in order to compete, you must finish the burrito and the margarita in one hour without using the restroom or throwing up. The restaurant will not accept any responsibility for illness or death called by participating in the challenge. I wonder what that margarita tastes like. I don't know. Ghost pepper margarita is a little... Goodness gracious. That sounds yeah. kind of intense. It does not sound good. But, <laughs> I mean... That just sounds like an impossible challenge. I mean, when you see the burrito, it looks so good, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you're allowed to have a like a couple other people eating the burrito with you, then it, you know you'd be set. Make, make it a lot easier. Rachel, are you a Lucky Charms woman? Oh uh, yes. Would you say that you love the cereal bits or the marshmallows? Marshmallows, more? definitely. Easily the marshmallows. 
Well, people like us can rejoice, because we all have a chance to win a box of the glorious marshmallows. Not the cereal, the marshmallows themselves. According to Eater.com, Lucky Charms is giving away only 10 boxes of the marshmallows, so unfortunately not everybody can have them. Those who want to win a box have to put a picture of themselves holding an imaginary box of Lucky Charms on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Lucky10Sweepsticks. Are you going to run home and take your selfie soon, Rachel? I don't, I don't know. See, like, they're good, but I don't know if they're good enough to eat a whole box of them. But they are... I know, like, when I eat Lucky Charms, I will separate the cereal from the, the marshmallows. Really? And eat the cereal first and then enjoy, like, the charms part, like the marshmallows. No way. I think that's just too much effort. I just, I don't know. It's worth it for me. Combined, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we have for Weird National News. But stay tuned, because when we come back, we'll have Mary Desmond and Susanna Shepard with Awkward Moments. <laughs> I'm Mary Desmond. And I'm Susanna Shepard. And, and this, this is Awkward, Awkward Moments. Moments. All right. This week we are talking about the Democratic debate. And more importantly, the SNL version with Larry David. Which is just perfection in its own element. Larry David is my hero. He is just a fabulously hilarious person. I grew up watching Curb Your Enthusiasm and enjoying the, the dry writing of Seinfeld and just everything Larry David, he can do no wrong. Okay, so seeing him as Bernie Sanders in this SNL skit, it just it, it, it just made me so happy. It made me so happy I actually wanted to cry. It Yes, it was beautiful. And as if the debate wasn't funny enough, Saturday Night Live came out with probably one of the best skits of all time. I'm sure it's difficult to get the opening skit to be spot on every single time, but they really got it this time, especially with this skit. The debate was on everyone's mind, and Larry David was hosting, it just, it all fit together so well. Alright, so, so the real debate itself is pretty interesting. Hillary Clinton was rapidly and openly expressing her very adroit opinions on the state of the country and her plans for America and should she be elected. It was very, it was very interesting. Everyone had very interesting viewpoints on things, and it was very fast. Yeah. I think she even said at one point, the only difference between her and Barack Obama are, dif are genders or something. I was yeah. like, okay, that's a weird statement. But then the old burn speaks up, Bernie. and this man is priceless. The man is great. He speaks in such a way that you understand him and you relate to him. And sometimes he's just so crazy. It's He's... Feel the burn. I love the man, but I he's I feel like he's he's borderline senile. Um, he he said damn on television, on national television. Though this doesn't go against FCC laws, um, it's still extremely bold and honestly a little awkward because like people don't just politicians just don't just say that like but, on on television, especially during debates. But he just said it. That's what I like about him, though. He's yeah. extremely down to earth and he's extremely relatable. And I mean. I would say damn on television, whatever, if it was going to get me votes and like have people like listen to me. Especially since if Hillary Clinton said damn, she would definitely get in trouble, just like those emails. <laughs> the debate featured Bernie yelling about how the American people don't care about Hillary's damn emails, which is true. We don't. But the fact that he said that on television definitely shocked a lot of people. Like, I could just see my parents, like, writhing in their seats at home, like, watching this. But I can also see people loving it because people really are sick of hearing about the emails. So, I mean, I give him, I respect him for it. But, Mary, you have to give it to him, though. He is going to watch out for us because he is one of us. He's not one of those rich millionaire snobs. Like, Hillary Clinton's a president's wife. Like, Donald Trump owns, like, half the world, you know. But... You know, let's let's talk about the skit, because that's really what we're here for. Yeah, okay. So, Larry, Larry David. Larry David, my dude, perfectly portrays Bernie Sanders in this skit. He has the suit, he has the hair, he has the faces, the expressions, the hand gestures, and even, like, the slight shoulder <laughs> imbalance, and, like, they're just, like, the crazy eye, like, that Bernie has, and, like, just, like, the, the aggression, but at the same time, like, the cool, like, kind of, like, hippie vibe, like... It was just perfect. Perfect acting. It really was. And he, he just gets right into it. He nails it. Everything about this skit is pure gold comedy. It makes 
a mockery out of the entire thing, which honestly, that's just all it needs to be. Alec Baldwin is, is Jim Webb, and he's just fantastic. It's just a smorgasbord of hilarity. It's, it's just wonderful. It's just a wonderful ridicule of the entire thing. Because it's silly. It is silly. It is very silly. And like that's what I liked about this debate, because I watched part of it, but I was studying at the same time. Not good. But I, then I watched the Republican debate, and it's just like the Democrats are so much easy going like nobody's like there's no tension like they're all nice and agreeing with each other and stuff and I mean they hit every great moment in the debate it is truly a masterpiece I looked at some tweets when the skit came out and I ended up just like dying laughing one said has anyone ever seen Larry David and Bernie Sanders in the same place I, it's I, so it's so perfect it is because they look so much alike they do and, and like, I yeah. saw one Twitter account I followed this account it's called like Seinfeld 2000 so it's like what would happen on Seinfeld in the present day. And a, a couple of months ago, I think it was like back in May, they said something and it was like Larry Sanders. And it was like a picture of Bernie Sanders, but they said Larry Sanders since they look so much alike. And then he was on SNL and they were like, called it. It was great. It literally, Larry David, Bernie Sanders. They predicted it. Like when, I, when I first started like uh, watching like stuff about Bernie, when he first started like really like coming into fame, um, I was immediately like, wait, this is Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like, this is literally Larry David. But um, in, like, the skit, Bernie is just, it's just great. All of it. I, I don't know where I was going with that. It's, that's okay. Just, yeah. I mean, it's, the dude got locked out of his email, and the only way to change his email was to get back into it. And we've, we've all been there at some point. Bernie, he gets it. He just, he gets it. it People say that about Trump, too, though. Like, people say, like, yo, Trump is awesome because he tells it like it is. No, he's, n no, he's not. No. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Not to mention he's a, like, filthy rich billionaire. Like, that makes zero sense. Do you realize he's, like, he doesn't, it just doesn't click, people. It doesn't, it doesn't click, click at all. But then Bernie's we see the Bernie, dude. and he's just like, I have, I have one pair of underwear. I have one pair of underwear. <laughs> Some of these billionaires, they've got... Four or five pairs of underwear. Imagine that. So many pairs of underwear. And I saw another tweet, speaking, speaking of Twitter, about um, Donald Trump and his son. And they, he said, like, these people look like the people going out on the purge and all of this stuff. But Larry David, though, like, he, moral of the story, he's, he's wonderful. And the part where he's talking about the underwear is fantastic. The part where he's talking about how he just like carries his stuff around pre-handed like a professor. He doesn't even have money for a briefcase. Like he's just the greatest. He's so real. He's so real. Especially being a broke college kid. I get that. He is his <laughs> own campaign. And I think that's what's so important about it. And he started from nothing. Like the money that he raised, that it just it came from supporters. It didn't come from big corporations trying to like buy him out and stuff. And I think that's just that's really respectable and great on his part. Yeah, I can't I can't stand when people are like, he's a socialist, he's a mm -mm. communist. Like, Bernie, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing yourself. great. yourself. He's okay. Give the man a chance. He's, he's the dude. The Bernie. weekly What's Up Awkward Moments Feel supports you. Feel the burn. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode of Awkward Moments. When we come back, we'll have Haley Lemonbaum and Alec Holcomb with viral videos. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Haley Olivenbaum. And I'm Alec Holcomb. And, and this, this is Viral videos. videos. You know him from Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic World, or as Anna Ferris's husband. But these random people on the streets of New York have no idea who Chris Pratt is. Hey guys, it's Billy. I'm out here on the streets of New York with my friend Chris Pratt, one of the biggest stars in the world right now, ready to hit the streets to talk to New Yorkers about how excited they are about Chris Pratt's career. Are you ready, Chris? I'm ready. Let's go. Couple, couple. You guys speak English? Yes. Yeah. OK, this is one of the biggest stars in the world right now. Who is it? I have no idea. Oh my god, it's Chris Pratt. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes, Chris. You know Guardians of the Galaxy? Unbe they've never heard. What? I, we don't watch TV. We it's movies! 
think he's still slumming on NBC? Sir, for a dollar, biggest star in the world right now, Hollywood Reporter says. Who is this? I don't know. OK, thank you. Sir, for a dollar, look who it is. All right, who is it? What are you, what are you? Huh? He's from uh, VH1? Yes, VH1, yes. VH1. Miss, for a dollar, Deadline says he's the merge is the brightest leading man to come along in years. No idea. You know who this is? <laughs> no. Entertainment Weekly says we finally, we finally have a new Han Solo after years of just Skywalkers. Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Sir, for a dollar, for a dollar, Deadline says he's the brightest leading man to come along in years. I think he is. He yes. Looks, he looks real bright. Yeah. I love a looking guy, look at him. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. Too. Yeah, who is he? F fine though. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Miss, for a dollar, look who it is. Hottest star in the world right now. Oh my God. Yes, what's his name? Chris Evans. No, Chris Pratt! Sir, for a dollar, look who it is. Oh, you're uh, you're an actor. Yes. Yeah. Liam? No. Yeah, no! Miss, for a dollar, look who it is. Hi. Yes, look at that. Hey, a... Hi. Hi, he looked one Hi. of the biggest stars in the world. Hello. Hello. Yes. Take your hand. Huh? What was that? That was a clue. Yeah. <laughs> it's Josh Jamel. Wow. Yes, Josh Jamel! Awesome! <laughs> That's exciting! Yes, it's Josh Jamel! Oh, wow! Okay, let's go! Sir, for a dollar. Look who's here. What? Chris Pratt. Yes, correct! There's your dollar! Yes. Hi, nice to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet What's you? your name? Renee. Oh, wow, Renee. Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic World. I like your wife. Thank yes, you! Yes, yes, his wife. She's on Mom! She's on... Oh, I don't watch that. What?! I could not believe this video. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's people, and like, I see that because I follow E News on Twitter, and like, I've heard the name, but I could not point out a picture of who they are or what movies they're in. So like, right. I feel for these people. But the poor, poor Chris Pratt, he's just sitting there like, no one knows who I am. I mean, come on, Jurassic World, Guardians of the Galaxy. I feel like they need to get on Netflix soon. Yeah, Help I mean, out. like seriously. I can understand. Dan, why some people don't. But then when he's like, it's Josh Jamal, and they're like, yeah, it is. That's him. <laughs> and he's like, you're just saying it so you don't look bad. No. No, it's not him, but good try. Hey, forever, right? All right, so with the recent first round of presidential debates between both Democrats and Republicans, I think it's time we revisit a classic vine. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> Hillary Clinton just, she's <laughs> such an awkward little duckling in this video. She's like, hi. Just chilling. I'm here. <laughs> just chilling. Cedar Rapids. I feel like they got Hillary a new phone, like an iPhone. They taught her what Snapchat was. They taught her what Snapchat was. I thought it was, wait, no. Then they taught her how to use Facebook and MySpace. They taught her how to send. Right, exactly. Like, like, type the whole world. text. Like, did she finally learn that day what LOL really she, was? She, like, just took a selfie for, like, the first time ever. And it's like, 2015, come on, Hillary. We can do this. Keep up. Yes, we can. <laughs> all right, so for this last video, all I want you to do is look at those wiggles. You asked for it. A whole video devoted to the rainbow sponge. The Army Arts and Crafts Department sent me to Korea. Now, not a normal sponge. This is so dense three sizes because I can't stand just one size. Another thing that I want to talk about is the hygiene of the sponge. I squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. No flab on this arm for my cleaning. Flab on this arm. Now, if you do get it on your hands, gloves are incredible. I have a pure, oh, I love a sponge that is absolutely pure. Oops, a virgin edge. Oh my gosh. I did. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, I want you to look at all of those wiggles. <laughs> oh my gosh, wiggles. Oh my gosh. I love to wiggle the whole thing. There are many other surfaces that you can sponge on. I'm going to show you wood. Of course, you can go straight. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love this. Are they incredible or what? <gasps> okay, calm down, D. And it's done. Yes. Do you see that? Oh, earth tone. Look at that. <laughs> Is this fun or what? Look at that. 
on a card. Ah. <sighs> Breathing heavy. Oh. Ah. Yes. Yes. Let's stamp it out. <gasps> oh my gosh. Now, think. Go this way. And now we zig. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that time. Okay. And then there. And then. Oh, this was one night that I did not sleep. It is so hard to stop. I know I'm not supposed to like think like this, but we all know. <laughs> well, like the hidden message that we're all thinking is in this video. It is. Oh, and look at this. She's like 70 years old, talking about like really aggressively about like shaking her wiggles and like <laughs> wiggling it and like she is. She kills me. And and uh, the best part about the video is like. At first, it doesn't seem that weird. Like, she's just talking about sponges. I'm like, all right, cool, Grandma. And as soon as those wiggles happen, I... The rainbow it. wiggles. The, oh, my God. She was, like, making those weird noises. It's like a weird QVC. Because QVC is already weird, but this is, like, a weird QVC ad that just makes me, like, uncomfortable. I don't know. I, I feel like it was, like, filmed in the 90s or something. It's just, it's one of those videos. The wiggles. Right. The wiggles. The rainbow wiggles. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. Grandma's getting, grandma's, grandma's doing grandma. Exactly, exactly. And that's all for Viber Videos this week. Stay tuned because up next we have Kevin Stefani and Zaid Barrow with TTG and the Basilisk. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. to the weekly What's Up. I'm Kevin Stefani. I'm Zaid Farah. And, and this, this is TTG, TTG and the Basilisk. Alright Kevin, why don't you pull out your decent jury and show everyone. Last month, Maya Donnelly awoke to what sounded like thunder in the early morning hours, but dismissed it as typical monsoon storm and went back to sleep. Later that morning, she looked at the carport in her home in Nojales, near the U.S.-Mexico border, and saw pieces of wood on the ground. She found a bulky bundle wrapped in a black plastic that had fallen from the sky through the roof of the family's doghouse. Inside the package was roughly 26 pounds of marijuana, a package that authorities say was worth $10,000 and likely was dropped accidentally by a drug smuggler's aircraft. Some say it's a drug smuggler's aircraft. I say it was God trying to slice his dog with some loud. And for that, I'm giving my decent drew to God. Thoughts, Z? Uh, do you believe her that she just, uh... Just happened to fall 26 pounds of marijuana into her <laughs> barn. It's a good point. A pretty good hiding spot in my house. <laughs> well, there was a hole in the roof of the doghouse, so she would have had to have gotten up and thrown the it through dog the doghouse. Isn't that what they call prison? I guess. Alright, well, I marijuana to fall through there. Anyways, Zaid, how about your decent Jew? My decent Jew this week is Larry David for his more than modest imitation of Bernie Sanders on SNL last Saturday. His vivid impersonation included not just his very recognizable raspy tone, but all his hand-waving mannerisms and preludes in his dialogue. Throughout this mockery, Larry remained very respectful of the potential Democratic candidate, and so deserved no reduction in his measure of decency. But he would have gotten it if he had not been respectful, correct? Well, he did a perfect performance, so his performance itself was decent. It was great. I love the way he used his finger. He was yeah. I don't like you, Hillary. And all of that pointing that he yeah. does towards, like, the chopping. You know, he always does that. Just splitting, you know, through the obscurity of issues. Yeah. And coming through on top. <laughs> exactly. Typical Good period. metaphor. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Just came up with it. All right. So, uh, who's your decently deficient thing? Why don't you whip that one out, too, Kevin? I'll whip it out, right? <laughs> this week, I'm going to give my decently deficient award to Hugh Hefner, president and creator of Playboy magazine. He recently made the decision to drop nude photos from the new photo magazine after 52 years providing the only light in the lives of many lonely men. <coughs> Zid. Playboy has been receiving a lot of negative criticism for dropping the most important feature of the business model, and Hugh Hefner has been the talk of frustrated men everywhere. What do you think, Zid? Has Hugh lost his marbles or are they just empty? Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, I think uh, he's been, he's lost his marbles a long time ago, probably literally, but, yeah, uh... He's too old. 
Yeah, he's pretty old. He's an he's old guy. Not as old as Bernie Quake. He was around during the uh, Roman Empire, you think? Or what was that? Uh, I think he was more during the, uh, the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines. Also Roman. Uh, who knows? I don't know. I thought you knew. I do. You don't. <laughs> I do. Byzantines. All right, all right, all right. All right. Alright. <laughs> Thank you for the mention, by the way. Alright, we can cut this there. <laughs> There's something in my throat that I just had to get out. Anyway, Zay, you're decently deficient. Please get this. This week, Netflix released a great movie called Beasts of No Nation. I'd like to name the Commandant, the main antagonist in the film, as the, as the decently deficient champion. Well, not an actual real life character or person. The Commandant was made uh, in a reflection of the archetypal warlord who takes advantage of child soldiers and leads them in the slaughter of whole villages in an ambitious attempt to gain face within their faction. As with the likes of Joseph uh, Coney, leader of the uh, Lord's Resistance Army, if you remember, and target of a massive campaign in 2012 for his high-profile war crimes, specifically involving children. The forced servitude, raping, killing, and mutilating of these, uh, these scumbags inflict upon kids as young as eight or nine years old earns them a place at the literal bottom of the decency scale. Right next to other de deficient folks such as Hitler or H.H. Uh, Holmes, one of the first uh, serial killers. This is probably the dirtiest show we've done all year. All of our topics are just bad. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty, things. I mean, yeah, the raping and you know, child soldiering and is drugs, probably the worst. The playboy, nudity, and God. Also, what happened to Cody? Uh, is he still out there? Yeah, I think he's still out there. Still uh, snatching up George. Which is not too surprising. I mean, even if he is removed, someone else is going to replace him unless there's some stability. Uh, if you watched our last week's episode, I think it was, uh, we mentioned the uh, Tunisian National Quartet. Uh, some sort of emulation of that in these kinds of regions would be absolutely brilliant. You should start. Yeah, yeah. I would love to start that. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. All right, thank you. All right, Double Tube Razi, please give us your two cents, your TTG tirade. This week, I'm going to take my segment to talk about Lamar Odom. The former NBA basketball player who was also famous for marrying Khloe Kardashian was found unconscious this week in a Las Vegas brothel after taking medication that was called a 72-hour Viagra. Odom was in critical condition and has only just woken up in the hospital. I want to forego my rent to extend my best wishes to Lamar. Odom was one of the brightest personalities in the NBA bringing happiness and joy to all those around him. Chloe took the news especially hard. Supposedly, she hardly left his side since he entered the hospital and has been described as a shell of her former self. While I am upset at Lamar for breaking the heart of such a fine and beautiful Kardashian, I'm willing to overlook this and wish him a speedy recovery, both physically and mentally. Uh, well, that must have been a uh, hard thing to get through. <laughs> um, a hard time, if you will, you know, to, to overcome. Yes. Oh, if you it seems are. like a long and hard journey. <laughs> yes, quite. All right, Zaid, pontificate. It's petty, it's specific, it's the exit from 81 onto 460 West. Just yesterday, I was driving home and followed signs for the exit for Blacksburg, exit 118. I failed to understand why the civil engineer saw fit to construct a lane that goes from the exit that you've just taken back onto 81. If I've already decided to exit, and this additional lane adds confusion to an exit that is already going to two different places. Granted, I should know that the exit by heart by now, but considering no other, other exits I take on 81 or otherwise, at least that I use, have a lane that returns you back onto the highway without actually exit, taking the exit first makes me second guess this turn every freaking time. Especially if I'm listening to Serial, the podcast story about the homicide. If you don't know it, look it up. It's called Serial. <laughs> As in consecutive order. Also, Jay did it, clearly. You know, they have the lane that goes back onto 81 because there are lanes that merge into that little exit lane, and then those people are the ones who get back onto 81. You mean there's an, uh, uh, there's cars a that ramp in, that goes onto... That goes to the same ramp that takes you off, is the ramp that the, they merge But why would they start that uh, before? You know, like, just have it... Maybe uh, it's a set distance, but then extend it in the other direction. It might have been more expensive to do it that way, I don't know. Yeah, well, that is why. But for certain, it's confusing because no other exit I take confusing. has something like that. So it's the leftmost of the exit that you take, but it's to the right, right. of that three lane kind of. Anyway, it is confusing. Yeah, that'll do for this week's episode. Have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next time on TTG in the Bachelors.